Konrad Engelberger and I am going to give you a presentation on pest management in FSM. So I hope you will enjoy it. So in this PowerPoint presentation uh, we start off with uh, the different pests being present in FSM. So this slide here shows you a nice well managed uh, market garden. Again as I explained before management and sanitation, clean, free of weeds, good crop rotation, all this healthy plant will provide you a good, good crop, a good yield and uh, you will get plenty of vegetables. So we start with insect pests. There are many insects, some are so small you cannot see with the naked eye. Uh, some insects eat part of the plants like the caterpillars other insects sting or suck the plant's juice out, out of the fruit, like fruit flies and white flies. This photo, this slide shows you aphids. Aphids are very small. You hardly can see them with the naked eye. Here it's magnified, it's under the microscope. But as you can see, there's plenty of aphids and they can do a lot of damage. Here, this is the tomato fruit worm. Again, it's a caterpillar, and as you can see on the slide, it makes holes into the fruit, tunnels in the fruit, and makes a real. The fruit will will rot away, and you cannot eat it. So, what you need to do is, um, if you see caterpillars, just collect them and uh, squeeze them or drown them in water and try to keep, keep your crop free of these caterpillars because once they build up in large numbers you will lose your crop. You can spray, uh, as I say, we don't want to use uh, pesticides but you can use some local sprays like using um, uh, uh, oil, oil and soap solution and that helps a little bit. <coughs> This is another pest which is present in FSM. Uh, it's millibugs. You find them quite often. It's usually under the uh, leaf, on the underside of the leaf, on eggplants, on uh, different crops, tomatoes. You say it, it's, uh, it's a quite a common pest. Again, don't allow it to build up. You can, you can remove them by hand. You can wash them off. And, or you can also spray um, oil and uh, soap solution. This is another insect pest, it's called the stink bug. Uh, they are looking different. When they are small, they are green in color and sometimes black in color. And when they are big, they are brownish. Again, they are sting into the fruits and uh, can cause a lot of damage in tomatoes, in eggplants, in uh, sweet corn. So that is called the stink bug. White flies are very, uh, a big pest in FSM. Uh, white flies, mainly in Chile, Chile are often attacked by white flies, but also other crops like tomatoes. We had some problems with cava, cacao growers with white flies. So white fly is quite a big pest and uh, we are trying to concentrate here on biological control. So if farmers have a big problem with white fly, we try to bring the biocontrol agent to the field and have the biocontrol uh, taken care of. We'll talk later on in this session a little bit more on biological control. Now, this I just showed you the major insect pests. Now, we are talking about nematodes now. Plant parasitic nematodes are small microscopic roundworms that live in the soil and attack the roots of plants. Affected plants wilt and may die. Root nut nematodes have swellings or galls on the roots. Like this photo shows you root nut nematodes. It shows you the galls caused by root nut nematodes and uh, this can be a big problem because once once you have a nematode problem uh, 
the root system, the root have very fine hair and roots and the roots feed the plants. But once the nematodes build up, the roots are destroyed, the system, and they don't feed the plant anymore with water and nutrients, and the plant starts to wilt and, and die. So nematodes is a big, big problem. And nematodes usually build up if you don't have a good crop rotation. If you, if you plant, like uh, you plant uh, uh, bell pepper after bell pepper after bell pepper, you get problems. So the answer for nematode is crop rotation, which is a cultural management. So lots of people here, I find out, they have problems like with cucumbers. Because they plant cucumber, cucumber, cucumber after cucumber two or three or four times, and then you get nematode problems. Another thing is diseases. Plants, if plants have diseases, they look like they're wilting, showing sometimes yellow or brown spot. This can be caused by fungus or bacteria. This is a banana leaf, and this is a, a fungus. And the leaf, the fungus will spread, and eventually the leaf will turn black and dies. So you can have diseases on, on tomatoes, on eggplants, on, on, on any crops. And some, some uh, like uh, varieties or some kind like tomatoes, they can be resistant. Uh, vertebrates, rats, can cause a lot of damage to crops like bananas, cassava, taro, and others. There are different species of rats in Micronesia. Other vertebrates are snake, birds, and fish. So we have, in Ponape, we have three different kind of rat species. But there are still many more which we don't have. Mollusks. Snails and slugs can, can, ve can be very damaging to vegetations, vegetables, cabbages, and seedlings. Uh, sanitation is very important to remove the breeding places. So snails like to breed or like to uh, stay under cover, like under roots, in compost area, under weeds. So if you keep your place nice and clean, good sanitation, you will have less problems with snails. You can, if you see snails, you can hand pick them and step on it or take a shovel and hit it and destroy it. Uh, I said this statement before, healthy plants are less susceptible to pests and diseases before a good management will reduce your pest problem. Therefore, if you have a good good management, you will reduce your pest problem. These are just photos of healthy plants, very strong, and they will produce a good crop. How can we control pests? So this is now a second part. Uh, we can use chemical control, but chemical control should be our last resort. There are many other management practices which should be considered. This is a photo of someone spraying. But now, uh, what are the pest management options? We should use integrated pest management. So integrated pest management means not just chemical control. There are many others which should be considered. And now we are going to talk about the IPM, integrated pest management. So spraying, as I said, it should be out. Okay. Now, now we are talking about insects and pests which are not present in the FSM because the reason why this is very important for you to know is if you find one of these new pests, you should report it immediately and maybe we can eradicate it before it is spreading. So it's very important. So this is uh, fruit flies. There are many different fruit flies and like this one is called, called the oriental fruit fly. 
It's, it's present in Palau, in Hawaii, in US, in Asia, in China, and in Nauru. And the oriental fruit fly is having many hosts. A host is a plant where the fly is, is laying the eggs inside. So that's called the host plant. So a lot of fruits and vegetables are attacked by this oriental fruit fly. And then the little worms come inside and the fruits and vegetables cannot be used to eat. Another one is the melon fly. And the melon flies in Guam, in CNMI, in Papua New Guinea, Salomons, Philippines, Hawaii eradicated it, Nauru eradicated it. So the melon fly is mainly a host attacking watermelons and cucumbers and any other cucapita family plants. So as you can see here, Hawaii has eradicated it, Nauru has eradicated it. So we are lucky we don't have it. And Ponape is growing a lot of cucumbers. If you have this one, it will cause us a lot of problems. Another one is the Asian, Asian longhorn beetle. It's in uh, China, Korea, Japan, oops, uh, and parts of the US. It's a host of trees. It attacks trees porous holes in it and even can kill trees. If this one could, could come to FSM, it would be terrible for a whole environment because there's so many, we have agroforestry, we have so many trees, that lots of these trees would be killed by this longhorn beetle. Another very uh, alert, very bad uh, pest which we should be alert is the brown tree snake. You may have heard that this snake is in Guam and is doing a lot of damage. It wiped out three or four bird species and, uh, and it also kills chickens and it's, it's a big, big nuisance. So it's in Guam, PNG, Salamons and parts of Austra Australia. Another one is the cocky frog. It's a very tiny little frog. It's in Guam now. Oops, sorry. It's in Guam and it, this frog makes so much noise that people cannot sleep at night. And in parts of, uh, I think, Hawaii, where it is present, people moved away and people cannot rent out their houses any longer because of this cocky frog. We don't have it. Another one here, which I want to spend a little bit more time to talk about, this is the coconut rhinoceros beetle. It is present in Palau, Samoa, Tonga, Valles Fatuna, PNG, and Guam, and Hawaii. So, Guam is not far from us, Palau is not far from us, and we are really concerned that this beetle could come to FSM. So, we just <coughs> recently, we developed an alert leaflet uh, which shows the symptoms of the rhinoceros beetle. This is the beetle and it shows what symptoms it is. Like it drills a hole in here and the leaves come out as a V-shape. And the idea is if people, if people see this beetle or these symptoms, they need to report it to agriculture or quarantine that we can act on it. So if people report, we'll send specialists to the field to determine, find out, is it caused by the rhinoceros beetle. And if this is the case, we have, we just have developed an emergency response plan. And this plan tells us exactly who is doing what. So if we find, if we get the beetle, uh, let's say we find out that the beetle is established or found, we will have people going to the field and trying to eradicate it before it spreads more. So this is the emergency response plan. So coconut rhinoceros beetle is definitely one we are very, very concerned because it's, it is in Guam, it is in Palau, like Yap is in very high risk, and so on. 
So, another one is the red banded mango caterpillar. Uh, it is in Palau and Yap and in many other places. It goes into the mango and drills holes in the mango and does a lot of tests. It's very tiny, very small. Another one which is not present is a, a bee, timber. It goes into, into wood and drills hole. As you can see on this right slide, that bee can cause a lot of damage. It's not here. Another very, very uh, high risk or very dangerous pest is the red imported fire ant. It is native, it is native in Latin America. It's present in some parts of the US, in China, Hong Kong, some parts of Australia, not present in Hawaii, not present in Guam. But there are many other ant species like the red little fire ant, which is not here in Ponapea either. Um, and as you can see this one, this red imported fire ant, it can really make a mess. Look at the arm of this person. The, um, in, there were cases where two people got killed by the ant. So it's a really very bad. Uh, so now this is another one on banana, which is not present. It's called the banana scapmos. There's another one which is not here, it's the Papuana beetle, it's on taro, it's in Kiribati, Salomon, Fiji and PNG. We don't have it, it's making holes into the taro and it's making a lot of, lot of problems. Uh, so these were insects which are not here, now we have plants which are not here. There's a disease called banana bunchy top virus, it's in Guam, it's in Tonga, Philippines and many other places. It doesn't allow the banana to grow up, it keeps the banana slow down and it makes it look punchy and has yellowish narrow leaves. Another one is a disease, the beetle nut disease in Guam and CNMI, we don't have it. Another one is coconut kadang kadang, it's present in the Philippines. Another coconut disease is in Guam, it's Tinan Chaha disease. Uh, there's another disease of papaya, it's called the papaya ring spot virus. It's present in Guam and Hawaii and India. We don't have this one. Uh, weeds, there are many weeds which are not here in FSM. So, I was talking now about pests which are not here in FSM. So what can we do not to get these pests here? So we have... Okay. So about weeds, uh, we have many weeds here in FSM, but there is one I like to show which is not in FSM, it's Myconia. And this one is in some place in uh, New Caledonia and uh, in Papua New Guinea. And the leaves is enormous big as you can see in this picture. And it's a very invasive uh, plant. And there are many other invasive plant species which are not here. But now I like to uh, talk about, uh, just a little bit about, so we have so many plants and animals and insects and diseases which are not here in FSM. So, it is very important to have a very good quarantine of biosecurity. So the quarantine need to know what they are doing. They need to inspect that whenever they allow any produce, fruits or vegetables, those fruits or vegetables can travel with pests. And the quarantine or the biosecurity office, they must do a risk assessment to assess the risk and the pathway. Pathway means how can the pest come from one place to another. If I give you an example, <coughs> the rhinoceros beetle, which we don't have in FSM and we are very concerned, it can travel with wood, with rotten wood, it can travel in com compost because that's where it's, it is breeding. It can fly into 
when the ship is loaded at night because it's attracted by the light, it can fly to the light and it can fall into the cargo hold or it can come on the airplane's cargo hold. So quarantine, biosecurity is very important. I should have done something. So the last part I like to talk or uh, stress is uh, quarantine. Why quarantine? As you can see from these slides, like it lists pests present in different places, like Cosarias 54 insect pests, Yap 99, Chuk 106, Bonapé 110, Palau 168, Guam 261, Republic of Mar Marshall Island 61. So <coughs> there's a big variation. Some countries or states have much more than others. What does it mean? It means there are pests which can travel from one country to another because they're not present. So quarantine is to prevent the introduction of, of pests. So the objectives of quarantine is to prevent or delay the introduction of pests. And another objective is to certify export commodities from the freedom of pests according to the International Plant Protection uh, uh, Organization. Uh, to assist in, erad in eradication and surveillance programs. So these are the objectives of quarantine. So quarantine is very important to prevent or delay the introduction of pests. And there's a lot of steps to be done. A lot of inspection need to be done. A lot of uh, risk analysis need to be done. And we have to take this serious because as I have been talking before, there's so many pests not present in FSM and we need to protect our environment, our livelihood, our food, our, our agroforestry uh, and quarantine is the most important tool in doing this. And in FSM we need to do more work to have improved the quarantine, improve the facilities, have a better inspection to make sure we can achieve our goal. Thank you very much.